Hello everyone and welcome to my channel! I am NinjaGuyVR and today we're doing an interview with some very cool people from the Medieval Dynasty New Settlement Development Team and it's going to be awesome. But before uh, we go with that, I just want to tell you guys what ITAI is. ITAI is an abbreviation for Indie Time Interview Edition where we interview uh, indie developers. But not only that, it, I also wear a tie. Of course, this is the main attraction of my, uh, of my show. And I want to let you guys a little secret. Today, um, actually since the last episode, I've been doing a double knotted tie. So a lot more fans here, you know, we've upgraded, uh, you know, the show with a, uh, a double tie. And now, before we go to the interview, I just want to say hello to everybody um, in the uh, in the chat. So we got Musketeer VR. Uh, hello, my friend. Big fan of the uh, of Medieval Dynasty. We've been talking a lot. And it's nice seeing you here. We've got David Wilson. Welcome, my friend. We've got Galden, uh, one of the developers from Medieval Dynasty. So if you guys have you know any questions, he could be there to answer them. Or we also have you know interviews in the show here to interview them also. We've got uh, PyCon Fusion. We've got Metal Wolf. Welcome, my friend. A new mod on my uh, channel. So congratulations. We've Pi Guy interviews friends. Yeah. We got Clemmy. Clemmy is another uh, developer from. Uh, spectral games and don't don't you say that you're not a developer tell me you're 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 totally a developer we've got carol let's make some dynasty and then we've got mr reaver the beaver welcome everyone and without further ado let me introduce you to uh the people that we have today and it's none other than greg and paul uh, paul is the ceo and greg is the lead developer uh of spectral games how are you doing my friends Yeah. Yeah, I want to thank you guys for coming in. I know it's very late for you all the way uh, to Poland. So I just want to say a quick thank you. I know you're busy. You've been doing a lot of work with the game and uh, very excited to talk about, uh, you know, the things you've been doing and uh, the future of the game. Yeah, <laughs> very nice. So, you know, for the people who don't know you, are you, uh, can you tell us, uh, you know, a little bit about yourself? And we'll start with Paul or with, Oh, wait, Greg, that's fine. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I think that's that's everything from me uh, about me. That is awesome. And from my side, uh, the path to game dev was a bit longer because my background is low. Uh, I work in a low firm for two year, ten years, and then I came and worked together with Incuvo, the developers of Green Hell, and there's where we met with Greg. And then we started our journey together by bringing to the community Medieval Dynasty New Settlement. Very nice. So uh, a team from the get-go. You guys were very familiar with each other already. And I like that. I like that you guys have experience and um, you know you know already how how to work together. So that probably helped into you know developing this new game for the for the quality that it is now. Um, now before Let's dive like even more in the past. So, uh, Paul, how did you, uh, you know, uh, when did you start gaming? You know, like back in the day, and up until when you decided to be a developer. Uh, that was uh, at the end of my career at law firm, uh, when because when I was a lawyer, uh, my clients were mainly IT companies, and Incubo was one of them. Uh, so when I uh, left the path of the lawyer, uh, I started to work with Incubo as the assistant to management board uh, and the lawyer. So it was like 2019, 2020, some, somewhere even at the times. Very nice. And you, you started gaming only, only in 2019 or did you play video games before? I played video games a lot, lot earlier, like uh, when I have 
when I was seven years. Oh wow! So thirty years ago. Yeah. So <laughs> I started playing video games. My first games that I played was Final Fantasy VII and oh. then Baldur's Gate One. Oh my god! Yeah, I love. Yes. Yes. I, th I think we're All gonna these go well together. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm a big <laughs> fan of Final Fantasy. So, and Baldur's Gate, I've been you know enjoying it a lot too. So, yeah. Great games. Yeah. And um, Greg, I think you'll agree <laughs> with Paul. I, I, I've, I've, you know, I, I've, I've cheated a little bit. I've, I've watched a, a previous interview with Greg in it, and he is a big fan of uh, Baldur's Gate. But tell us a little bit about yourself. You know, when did you start gaming up until you, you, when it become a developer? Yeah, I don't really remember when I started gaming. All I know is uh, I was a gamer since I remember. <laughs> so it's hard to determine which year, year I started. Uh, basically, making games was my dream from a little child. Uh, I I was studying at the university at the side of game development. And luckily, I was uh, um, I was hired as a student there, uh, and this uh, have led me to, an, I can say, an easier access to the industry as a in basically junior. Uh, so yeah, I, I love that. I loved uh, how quickly I have managed to, to get into the industry and start to work uh, uh, strictly after the, the university. So I'm having a blast right now. I think it's, it's the best moment in my life right now. And yeah, I think it couldn't be better. Yeah, and you know, already a lead developer, which is a pretty big achievement, um, considering I, you know, consider I, I'm see, I'm gonna say considering your age, like I don't believe you're like 50 years old, right? So uh, <laughs> no, I, no, I feel like I'm 25. I'm 25. 25 for a lead developer, yeah. that's crazy. So I'm I'm only like transitioning to a lead developer now, and uh, you know, I'm a lot I'm a lot older than you, so uh, that's amazing. <laughs> Congrats on that achievement. That's that's you, really cool. Um, so yeah, let's talk a little bit uh, about the company before we start um, digging into the game. So um, you know, I've uh, we've learned that already that uh, Spectral Game is uh, contains developers that has already worked in VR. So um, that's pretty cool. And then we we've learned that you guys are kind of like decided to make your own company uh, from a previous company uh, who made Green Hell, uh, which is also cool. Um, but uh, what I'm curious about, Spectral Games, you know, Medieval Dynasty is kind of a big game. And I was wondering, is was the company created just to create uh, just to create Medieval Dynasty New Settlement? Or uh, do you guys plan on creating more games and uh, more IPs? Uh, well, the story of Spectral Game is like it's going back like 2009. Wow. Uh, it, yes, it has a long story. It was previous a company that was doing mobile games. Oh. Then in 2017, it transmissioned to VR games and was incorporated into Incubo, mm -hmm. uh, which took all the developers into the mother company. Uh, and we got a proposition, an idea mainly from one of the shareholders that maybe Medieval Dynasty would be great in VR. I loved the idea and Incubo didn't know what to do with the uh, company Spectral Games. So I told, I gave the proposition I can took it and bring Medieval Dynasty into the VR. Uh, so that was mainly the idea to start uh, another company to continue the, the developing process and the Spectral Games. Yeah, and we made it. It's definitely not a company of one game. We've got a lot of ideas and we are looking for a lot of big uh, and fun IPs because we think that VR at the stage of the development that it is now needs great IPs and not mainly ports, but spin-offs and different ideas to the known IPs because it's a new fun and new um, new play, way of play for the players. Very well said. I like that. I like uh, the enthusiasts mm -hmm. that you guys are going with uh, VR. And, um, you know, it's true. Like, like um, ports don't interest me as much just because 
the mechanics, the the they don't transfer too well in VR. You know, you wanna you wanna shoot a gun and it just there's no like physics, right? Like a, you can wobble it like a like a fork and, and all of that. So it's very nice when a game is built from the ground up and you know uh, being fully immersive for the game. Um, and you know, just a, a quick question out of curiosity. You know, Medieval Dynasty feels like a very big game. So I've been wondering how many people as, as work on the game. Well, when we started, there were three developers. Oh my gosh! Uh, okay. Building yes, building the the concept. Uh, mainly, the most of the time, like seventy percent of the development time. Time there were like eight people, and finally, at the latest stage, we are now thirteen people. Oh my gosh! That is so cool to see that it's been growing like that throughout the process. You know, you didn't stick with the the same amount of people, and that probably helped in making the game bigger. So, uh, so I like that. Yeah, I yeah, would say the... it's yeah. I would say it's still a little less than what's needed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we are a very small uh, company uh, doing such big game in VR that has a lot of content. It was a hard road, but I think we have made it. Yeah, yeah, yeah uh, very understandable. So, you know, let's go ahead and talk uh, some more about Medieval Dynasty New, New Settlement. Get into that, the deeper question here. So for the people who don't know, Medieval Dynasty is a survival game based in medieval times. Uh, at a glimpse, you know, you can think that it's very generic and simple, but upon looking into it, uh, myself included, it's just an amazing game. Uh, there's just so much to do. Uh, and I'm not the only person who had this feeling. You know, I've watched some reviews and some people were like, oh, you know, I think I'm not going to like this game. And they end up really liking it after looking more into it. So, uh, Paul and Greg, can you tell us, um, in your own words, what uh, Medieval Dynasty is about? New Settlement. Yeah, if I can tell or describe our game in one word, I would say it's embodiment. Uh, if I could uh, describe it in another way, it's freedom. Basically, our core design concept was that you can hop into, into our world and do whatever you want. We give you a tools that you can use to be whoever you want and do whatever you want in our game. We really like the idea of the open worldness where Literally, you just spawn in the middle of the world and you can turn around and you will be astonished that it's not tunneled. Like, you can see the, hor the horizon, you can walk around freely without limitations and go whenever you want. You can you, you may explore, you may build, you may be a farmer, you may be a hunter, you may be whoever you wish. So I think uh, Medieval Dynasty Settlement is a combination of uh, multiple genres, I would say, the same like the flat version. We have uh, a sandbox survival experience with some of the elements of the strategy game and some of the economy simulation, I could say, in a little bit. Uh, so that is a, something that haven't been made before, the, the flat version. And for the VR, of course, it didn't it wasn't made before yeah. uh, and i see that people like it that you can do whatever you want and we don't force you to to do anything specific that we wanted as a developers so i think that would be a short summary about what is medieval dynasty settlement That's yeah exactly and when you when you take the different genres uh partially there is nothing special in it, but we, when you mix it together, like the flat game did it, and hopefully we managed it as well, there is a lot, lot of fun and a lot of freedom to do, to play. If you want to do some quests, you are doing the quests. If you want to stay and develop your farm, you are developing your farm and you are living just the medieval life. And what we what we wanted to bring to the players also the feeling how it could be in medieval times, so how the life looked like. And I think we managed to do it. Yeah, definitely. And you know, I'm not gonna lie, I I like the survival games is one of my least favorite genre. And I don't know how you guys did it. Like I, I don't know what kind of magic you did, but this game is just amazing, you know, like um, Clemmy, uh, you know, I talked to Clemmy because I wasn't sure about the game and then she really convinced me. She told me about modes that you guys have and what you can do and all of that. 
and uh, you know that definitely excited me. So uh, we'll be digging into deeper into why uh, a game like this, you know, very in uh, interests me a lot. So uh, before we get into that, though. Um, you know, me Medieval Dynasty is like a very big IP, very well known. You can even see pe people in the chat saying that uh, they, they know about it and they, they, don't, they, they don't have a VR. Uh, well, some of them do, but um, so how the heck did you guys acquire such a big IP? Any, uh, you know, any, uh, any interesting story on that? Uh, as I mentioned, the idea came of one of our earlier shareholders and he managed to make a meeting between us and uh, RenderCube, the developers of the flat version of the game, and Top Leads uh, from Germany, who is their publisher. And when I pitched the idea for bringing Medieval Dynasty to VR, uh, we get the common ground. They, yeah, they, they, they loved what they heard, they loved what they seen, and they believed in us that we can bring this game together. And since then, so since 2020, we are working really, really closely and we became friends. So the mm. Render Cube, the whole team of Render Cube, the management board are great people, are our friends. And they helped us a lot during the development process. They cheered us up and they, yeah, we changed and talked about different ideas of the game. It was, yeah, it was a great creative process with them. That is amazing. And, you know, starting the, your, your first game being Medieval Dynasty and, you know, such a big product, such a quality product. It's just gonna open more doors, uh, which is awesome. You know, maybe you'll be able to pitch to uh, to other games like uh, Valheim, which has been mentioned uh, <laughs> in the Discord. Hopefully, that you guys can make that it happen. Was, That'd be yeah. cool. We have so many games that we would like to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah I can imagine. So pick pick the best one. Uh, that, that's my only <laughs> <laughs> my only advice. <laughs> so hopefully for, we'll manage it. Yeah. Yeah. Good. So. You know, just just uh, to be clear, for the people who don't know, is this a port of Medieval Dynasty, the original game? No, no, not at all. Uh, we would we would like to, to to split this like in the middle, like we are not a port in an, any way. Uh, basically, by a spin-off, we have uh, some of the mechanics uh, inspired with the, the flat version. Basically, if I could say, it is uh, another game in the same universe. Hmm of medieval dynasty it's not a port because it's it's not literally not possible to port the the flat version to the vr we have made some of the mechanics from the ground up to to vr some of the mechanics we have added that are not existent in, in the flat version right now uh as i played last time i think pottery is 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 not something that you can uh, do like in our game uh like in flat version uh, basically, we we started um, chopping, chopping, uh, not really chopping, but like um, putting the flat version into a small pieces and thinking uh, how it could work in a VR. We have carefully selected every single part that could be made in a nice and immersive way, and we have uh, really nicely connected it together. And here is how the the medieval Dynasty settlement uh, have been created. I like that. It's it's a cool story and. Um, you know, I hope that you guys inspire other developers to to do the same. You know, not just do ports and just do their own spin-off. Uh, just by you know, even though it's a spin-off, it's it's still a true uh, true to the the original game. You know, you, you're going to play this game and you you're going to know right away that this is Medieval Dynasty. Also, um, it's almost like playing. Uh, well, a spin-off is a good word, yeah. It's, it's as if you're play, playing like an expansion of the game, you know, by the DLC, uh, we have this expansion with yeah. so much yeah, more. We have, some, we, we have some connections to the flat games. If you know the story of the of the flat games, oh. we blinked a little bit to the players who are known to the, to the story with, with, from the flat game. But when doing spin-offs, you need to have luck and understanding in your partner's side. So Render Cube understood it from the ground that spin-off is a great, great idea and not the port. And they supported us from the beginning. So we had really, really uh, luck 
with that. Great. So yeah, a lot of uh, flexibility uh, in the yeah, game. The, which is the awesome. creative freedom. Yeah. yeah, I love that. So in the game, there is currently two modes. There's a, an adventure mode and a sandbox mode. Can you uh, tell us in your own words what those two modes uh, are exactly? Yeah. Um, adventure mode was created by design for players that are not familiar with the flat version. Basically, I could say the, the adventure mode is a prolonged tutorial about the game that paces you the whole content of the game uh, in a, a slow and hand-picked manner, so you don't feel overwhelmed. Uh, we know that some players like to be guided by a hand throughout the experience, so adventure mode is exactly for them. And some players would like to hop into a sandbox, have every single tour av available uh, to their hands and do whatever they want. So this is exactly how we split our game into two modes. Uh, yeah, and sandbox is uh, basically this, the same thing, but you don't have the story part, but you have dynasty quests, side quests, you have all basic, oh. um, all basic uh, recipes unlocked. Uh, so you can, and you can build everywhere in, in opposite to the adventure mode. Adventure mode has limited building zones uh, because of the story locations. We didn't want players to, to build there. Uh, so if there are any um, people that would like to to build everywhere, uh, you can hop into Sandbox and uh, be yourself. Oh my gosh, that's that's so cool. Sandbox is about freedom mainly. Yeah, yeah. That, that's something uh, to to uh, to keep in mind is that you know this is an open world game, and wherever you put your stuff, wherever you you know if you want to put uh, uh, some flowers. At the other end of the of the world, it's gonna stay there. You know, you close your game, you open your game back. Everything that you did is still there. So, pretty impressive, especially for mo uh, mobile technology, um, and especially with the Quest Two, since uh, it is a uh, you know it, it is getting a little older. So, uh, it was definitely put uh, to the test and to to its uh, full potential, which is kind of cool. Um, you know, I, I love adventure mode, and I'm kind of like almost using it as a sandbox now because. You know, you're playing, you're doing the quests, and then in the quest, you kind of have to wait a day before you you do uh, you, you you continue your quest. And when that happens, well, you know, I'm I decided to build houses, and then I decided to uh, do side quests. You know, do a lot of do pottery and, and do all of that. And then I realized that it's been like a whole week in the game, and I haven't even continued my my <laughs> main quest anymore. So. It's it's definitely cool that it introduces you to new mechanics and it just never gets old. It always is always fun. Um, so for the people who you know who are looking into trying this, um, what kind of VR element have you guys implemented in there to uh, impersonate as a character? Um, a VR element that could impersonate a character. Mm. I don't really understand oh, what do you mean with sorry. this question. Uh, yeah, so I meant like, um, you know, when you need wood, you don't just like press a button to pick up the yeah, wood okay. or, you know, when you, yeah, when you want to need a plank and things like that. Yeah, basically we tried to uh, extract an essence of the medieval dynasty from the flat version. So we thought about what were the core uh, game interactions in the flat version for players. And uh, we tried to uh, move every single one of those basic, basic essential interactions to our game. Of course, we don't have everything that the flat version has, but we focused on the things that players like the most. For example, the, the building part, the, the, the dynasty part, hunting, and decorating your village. So uh, every single mechanic that we designed, we were designing with the core concept of it needs to have something uh, like a VR motion, a VR interaction. We really hated the, the fact that some games use uh, uh, UI elements or buttons to solve things. Well, I could say professionals have standards. So we tried to do everything the best way possible for the best embodiment feeling in our game. Uh, and this was the core concept of designing every single mechanic and this concept will stay uh, with us throughout the development in the in the future future uh, content updates mm -hmm. uh, so yeah i would say 
this is the element, the embodiment. Like we wanted you to feel that you are in the game. The immersion is, I guess, the, the easiest part because it's very easy to, to be immersed in a VR game because you have a headset that cuts you out, out, of, of, the, out of the real world. But the embodiment is the, the, the thing that lacks in many VR games. Mm. So we try to uh, give the player the feeling that he is a part of this world and he has um, he can put a value in it. The value of, it, of his own hands and playtime that he can uh, put into our game and grow your uh, dynasty and build your village. It's very I, I cool. Guess it, be... it, it definitely feels like you're actually living the medieval life, you know, when you're, you're, you put on your headset and you have to do all these tasks yourself. Um, but I just want to mention something that, uh, Greg, you've mentioned in your other interview is that, um, you know, these tasks doesn't feel mundane, you know, like if I need wood, it's not going to take you an hour to get 60 logs, you know, you, um, everything was built. So, um, so, you know, that they, they keep your time important, you know, they, they, you want to make sure that nothing takes too long or be, it's too boring, which is pretty cool. Yeah, uh, our gameplay loop design was that we wanted the player to success or finish a given task in every play session. Looking at the average game uh, player game session in VR headset, it's about one hour. So we wanted that every time a player hops into our world, he will finish something that he wanted to finish. He will either build a building, do some quest lines, uh collect or gather some resources etc of course we couldn't do it the same way like the flat version does where you like skin a bear and you get 60 meat from it and then you go to the fireplace hold e for two minutes and wait until it finishes cooking because in vr it's of course not something that players would like to do like uh, hold a meat stuck on a sharp stick near the fireplace for two minutes straight your hand will drop off to the ground so uh, our whole game has been rebalanced and kind of squashed down in terms of amount of resources. Uh, you could clearly see that in the flat version, uh, you wouldn't be able to build such a, a huge village in such a short time than in our game, because strict of the play session, you can uh, easily play 10 hours straight in the, in, on the PC in the flat <laughs> version. No, in the headset it's kind of harder, yeah. <laughs> not even not even talking about the battery life, uh, but the overheating of the headset itself. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, yeah, that was. Yeah, and um, something you also said is that when you take off the headset, you want to feel like you've accomplished something, right? You want to yeah, have the feeling yeah, yeah. Of, of of you know having something accomplished, and which is th nice. This boosts you to come back to the game and do more stuff later on. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and uh, you know talk about the, the some very fun stuff. Uh, you know, talk about the future of the game. Before we do that, though, um, I just want to tell you guys that there's been a hot fix released today. Actually, I didn't get a chance to uh, to read what it was all about. So you know, I'm pretty excited to to learn what we're getting. So uh, Greg and Paul, what um, what did you guys fix? You know, since uh, since the release that people can look forward to. Yeah, I won't count every single change <laughs> because it would be way too long. Yeah. Uh, basically, we have been collecting uh, bugs from the release and before the release. Uh, some of them have surprised us, uh, but we have. I hope we have managed to fix all the, the rare brokers or rare uh, events that wasn't clear for the players. Um, so basically, the hotfix was to make sure that the game is stable in and passable in every single way. We have seen players, complete many players actually completing the game, we have problems, but some of them had some initial issues that required our help or, or something was bugged. Uh, yeah, I so said the game is so big and we are so small that many things have slipped under our fingers, but uh, the upcoming months, uh, upcoming weeks will be uh, our main job would be to keep the game stable and fixed for the players to have uh, an experience that we planned for. Um, so yeah. I like that. Yeah, and we are listening to the community. We are uh, reading every pack suggestion uh, and we are trying to fix everything. So it would it won't be the last hot fix. If something comes to mind or the players find something 
we'll fix it as soon as possible. So guys, um, if you have any bugs or if you find anything, just go onto our Discord. Um, there's a the Discord invite in my description if you want to go check it out. And uh, the developers are very active, so you know you're going to put a bug. If it's a new bug, they'll go ahead and you know ask some questions, maybe ask your save file, and they're going to figure it out you know very quickly. And uh, so make sure to go there. This is where they they keep track of everything. So um, you know definitely check it out. This is a uh, this is something to take. Yeah, it will. It would be great, and please have some patience with us. We are a really small team, and we are doing our best. Yeah, so thank you for your help to the whole community. You are great. And yeah, let's work together. So, the, you know, something that I've heard in Discord is that um, you guys will be releasing a roadmap eventually. Um, what kind of, uh, you know, I don't know if you're allowed to talk about it now, but uh, what kind of things can we expect on the roadmap? I think we can a sneak peek that the roadmap will be published tomorrow actually oh my gosh uh, excellent yeah so stay tuned for that um i don't want to spoil what will be there but basically this will be uh, our plan on developing the medieval dynasty new settlement for the upcoming months um so yeah of course the first ones will be the, the patches for the hot fixes and stability patches that that is always one uh, and the first I could say because it's obvious like the first priority big, bigger patch would be uh, an improvements for quest free uh, for quest free headset yeah and the rest we, i will yeah. yeah yeah and the rest uh, we will keep for the roadmap tomorrow okay yeah maybe different languages and something yeah. new is also coming so it will be announced tomorrow that is very nice um I have more questions towards that, but I might not ask them. Uh, <laughs> just because, you know, I don't want to be spoiled. Um, there's someone in the community, though, um, that asked a very interesting question. I was wondering if uh, that would be the case. So are you guys looking into implementing B-Haptics in the game at some point, if, if there's enough demands to it? Yeah, we have thought about it earlier, way earlier before the release. Uh, we didn't have time for that back then. Uh, we think that it's not really, it won't be really needed in our game because we are not a combat fighting game. Uh, however, if it will be a high enough demand for that, for sure, I see no problem with, with implementing that. We thought like, yeah, we are not Asgard Wrath or anything like that where the combat and is the main uh, part of the gameplay. Uh, so we thought that uh, it's not the first uh, it weren't our first, uh, it wasn't our first uh, priority on the list. Yeah, it's something additional that we can add in future patches if if players would want that. That's good. We are thinking about it, but yeah, there are different priorities right now, but we are not saying no. So in terms of priority, you guys are really looking at the community, right? Like, so if everybody wants something, you guys will up it up in, in the priority, so it's all about what the players want. Yeah, exactly. I guess we in our world roadmap, in roadmap, we will have our what is our our uh, I can say bullet points for the for this uh, upcoming months. But it's not, of course, everything that we will do throughout the development. Uh, of course, we will do patches in between that won't be visible on the roadmap. Uh, that can add some fixes or changes that player would, players would want. Uh, so if I could say one thing, so to to players is like, if there's anything that you would like to do, uh, get changed or added, just hop in on our Discord, on our game suggestions channel, and either uh, add a new suggestion or try to find your one, because we have many uh, copies of the same ideas and just ping or bump the, the current one. Uh, or just add as some emojis so we can see it's a uh, highly populated one and we will uh, move it higher in the in the priorities list. I like and that. We are reading Discord yeah, daily, so yeah. <laughs> please do it. I, 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 I approve of that. They, they, they really do. They're always, always there. I, I wake up in the morning, someone is there. I could go to bed at night. There's still someone there, you know, it's commenting. So it's, it's pretty crazy. Um, so we know 
for sure that at some point co-op will be implemented in the game. Um, are you guys able to tell us um, what you're imagining of getting? Like, is it going to be um, someone who get, goes in your village and help you out? Uh, or are you, are you allowed to talk about your ideas of what you would like to have in co-op? I don't think I could tell some more specifics, but um, uh, I guess we could go with the way like the more of a sandbox experience. Yeah. Uh, and that is something that I could tell, I guess. Um, I don't want to spoil or um, I don't know the word for that. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. We, we don't want uh, the players to feel um, uh, I miss the word. Alone? Or... Mm, uh, uh, stick, I forgot. Stick, stick to what, what, what we say. Yeah. We've got some ideas, but uh, the most important thing and also the hardest at the same time it's that it needs to be optimized really really good so when playing co-op so you need to have in mind that there are two to four players but yeah. that's yeah but that, that that's that is a must be and the game needs to be going in 72 fps's so uh that's the main main priorities Mm, we are doing our internal test. We've got some ideas. I can tell that may, mainly it will go into the sandbox mode, but please don't take it as 100% sure that at the end yeah. it will be just the sandbox. We are testing. What we can say is that we started to work on COP. It's an really early stage. We don't want to give any date we would like to surprise the the players and the community but we need to be ready because we want to deliver a really really good experience oh i how how i wish to be a fly in a you know the studio of spectral games <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome i've already I've learned more than i thought that i would so uh, i love that two to four players yeah that is very exciting um, we've got a question here from Unwell Gaming, which is kind of uh, interesting. He's asking, will it be open to community community mods at some point? Is that a suggestion that you guys would be uh, considering, you know, if, if it would be on, in demand? Yeah, we have heard some of those. Uh, basically, in official mod support, uh, there is the biggest problem is that it's need, it needs to be heavily moderated uh, because of the meta side. If we provide official mod support, we need to provide uh, moderation of that content. And that is something that we can't, can't afford right now. Uh, of course, people could mod our game unofficially, but it's then it's uh, outside of our um, like requirements to, to, to mod it, to um, guard the, the state of the game. Uh, but right now we don't plan to implement the, the, the official mod support uh, until the game uh, is finished in our minds, I guess. Mm. Like we have a, 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 like say a roadmap in our minds that we want to finish before we start doing uh, some of some of those. Or maybe I guess we will see because we can like grow after the release pretty much so we can afford uh, a content moderation. So it's nothing put in stone, mm -hmm. but it's it's not so high in our priorities right now. Uh, but yeah, if players would like to see it, uh, feel free to game suggestions. Yeah, so we know how much of you and how how people would like that. You know, if the game rises a lot in popularity and you know your uh, your finance is good, you you could hire someone who can take care of moderating the mods. You know, so. So as, as for sure, you know, as good as the game can do, as the better we'll get in support, you know, more, uh, more content, more uh, extra things that we can see. So as long as the players support the game, um, you know, we'll see Spectral Games support it too. So I like that. Exactly. 100% sure. We are treating Medieval Dynasty New Settlement as a long time title. So we've got a lot of ideas. 
uh, that we want to bring to the players, but it all depends on the popularity of the game and the possibilities of the headsets. So uh, we want to make it and develop uh, and upgrade as long as possible. But let's see what the future brings. Perfect. That's awesome. Um, now, you know, right now, the game is only available on MetaQuest. Do you guys consider uh, releasing it on other platforms at some point, like PSVR 2 or PCVR 2? Is that possible or is it that locked down right now to, to Quest and that's not going to happen? It's, yeah, it's possible. We are thinking about it, but Quest is the priority right now. It's the biggest VR player base. And uh, Meta has its own idea how to develop the VR market, and it's really, really good. And when we are looking at the different markets, yeah, they are maybe better graphically, um, but they are not so big, and the future of them, it's not so sure. So we are looking what's happening on the market. We definitely would like to make it, uh, but let's see what the future brings and how the state of the VR market will look like. Awesome. Um, very promising. Um, you know, I'm going to support you guys. I, I, you know, when I like uh, uh, to support a dev, I, I do double dip, triple dip sometimes. So definitely uh, we'll get some of my money if you do end up uh, putting it somewhere else. Um, so Chad, just to let you know, um, we're going to open up to some questions. If you guys have any questions, right. um, Make sure to uh, to ask them. Uh, I just got got a few more questions here, but uh, we're, we'll definitely open up if you guys do have some. Um, so, Medieval Dynasty, you know, you guys previously work on it uh, on, on a you know a survival game called Green Hell, and I've seen actually a lot of people talk about uh, they compare these games, and usually they, they say that uh, Medieval Dynasty is, is the better one. So. Out of curiosity, how what elements from Green Hell helps you to improve the experience in Medieval Dynasty New Settlement? Uh, I'm kind of shocked that people think our games are to be compared even, yeah. because from this uh, strict fact that we have, may, I think the only similarity is the tack of survival, but our survival versus Green Hell's survival <laughs> is a completely different survival. <laughs> it's uh, hell. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> So I guess from the from the game development from the game design, uh, I think it uh, we didn't really move uh, anything or anything didn't really help us because the game is totally different, uh, and I I don't think if I could like except the, the hunger and first bars I don't know if I can name any other mechanic that we have in similar on any yeah, design concept yeah <laughs> backpack okay uh, but uh, yeah I think. The, the fact of years of development and, and the market knowledge what players would like is the only thing that that we could uh, use over here. Uh, yeah, from the technical standpoint, it's 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 a totally different game. Uh, we are an open world game, so that's a yeah. Green Hell is looking beautiful, of course, with those closed zones that that are easy to to manage. Uh, we have struggled a lot with with maintaining our uh, foliage. Uh, so yeah, I, I yeah. That. So you didn't thought of like, oh, you know, I, I already have experience in Green Hell. I can just transfer all of that in Medieval Dynasty. It was just like, forget everything you know and uh, just you know, create this new game. Yeah, I like yeah, it. Really. <laughs> yeah, the the Green Hell had uh, a, a design of, for example, the crafting system. That, like the, every every craft that you would do, you would need to have the, the physical motion, like mm -hmm. you stick the hammer, with, you the stick with the rock to make a, an axe. Uh, we thought about that because that was pretty cool in, in, in the uh, Green Hell Quest Edition, um, but it wouldn't work for us because we have a much higher uh, scale for building in our game and crafting in our game. Like if you would need to craft 15 axes to sell for money, uh, like in Green Hell system, you would, uh, I think, uh, faint faster than do that. So, uh, yeah, I, I couldn't see any similarities in that. <laughs> wow. Yeah, that, that's that, very interesting. You know you know what? Um, I personally thought that there were going to be a lot uh, of knowledge transferred to, uh, to Medieval Dynasty, but it's not the case. So 
Uh, that's something that I've learned today. Very, uh, very interesting and impressive. Um, someone yeah. in the chat here, Baxter in VR has a question. Um, so he's asking a question about flat gains uh, to VR. And for the, the people who don't know what it is, it's uh, a uh, team of people. They're not, uh, you know, they don't have a, a, an official studio. What they do is they create mods to uh, bring flat games into into VR. And they've cre uh, recently created a new studio, if I'm not mistaken, and they'll be working in creating official games uh, ports and put them into uh, in the store. So that's pretty interesting. So Baxter is asking, Flat Games to VR recently announced they are working to make full VR ports of old and classic games. Um, have you thought of working with them? Uh, we haven't thought about working with them because we were really busy with bringing Medieval Dynasty to the for to the players, but uh, we wouldn't say no. So if it would be a really great IP, uh, why not? I think the VR market is so small that there is no competition like direct competition. Uh, we need to cheer everyone up and we need to help each other up. So even co-working on a title would be a great possibility to develop the VR market. So why not? That's that's something that I've seen with the VR development is that there's a lot of, or not, not partnership, but a lot of communications between other devs, you know, a lot of VR is still kind of new. So there's a lot of people sharing knowledge from one another. And uh, today I actually I've connected um, a developer that's really good at porting PSVR 2 games with another dev that's mm -hmm. looking into that. So um, it's all little things like that that's happening in the background, you know, like people that just help out each other, which is nice. Uh, I love I love uh, seeing that happening in the background. Um, yeah, that's really, really great. And that's what we need really to uh, bring the VR market to masses. Of course, we need better hardware and better IP, but it won't happen when the devs are gonna fight with each other. We need to help each other and work together. Yeah, exactly. We've got a question in the chat and maybe that's something that's already in your list, or maybe we're going to add it today. Take out your notebook. Um, Troy Rizzo is asking, are you looking at adding clothes with weather damage, like cold? Yeah, basically what we thought about our game, uh, I could say a biggest difference from the fat version is the, the lack of the cold, hot uh, system that could kill you. Uh, when we were playing the flat version, this was something that was stressing out, uh, stressing us out. We don't want to have our players to have that feeling in our game. Uh, our game is a strictly casual game. Uh, we don't want players to, to stress about that. Of course, we don't have a body in our game. So making clothes, uh, <laughs> I think without the body would look silly. So right now we are not thinking about it. Uh, of course, if we would uh, ever in the future add a, a body or a, a full body, uh, a clothes, armors and any other things like that uh, would be open to consideration. But for now, we don't plan to add that. Uh, yeah. That's good. Um, you know, that, that's cool because uh, I'm sure that you guys had a list of all the elements that Medieval Dynasty has and then you're you separate all of them. You're like, is this good in our game? Is this not good in our game? And then you decide why. And uh, it, uh, it's pretty cool. I like that. Um, I like. I also like what uh, Clemmy says here, which I kind of wasn't. I, I guess I should have known be, for the way that you guys talk about. But she says, Spectral Games want to be known for creating VR spin-offs of popular fat screens IP. So this is the main focus of Spectral Game, to be able to completely rethink and re remade a game to be the best VR experience rather than a simple port. That makes it very unique. And uh, um, I just wanted to mention it just because it's not something that I that I knew. And it's it's just cool that um, to make people aware of that. Um, yeah, I think if we would ever, uh, if, we will, if we will in the future make any other IP or, um, any, or our IP or any other like that, uh, we would like to have a creative freedom over that. We would like to take a mechanic and be able to do it the best way possible for the for, for the VR and not strictly to be tied to the to the um, porting the mechanic. Yeah. We don't really like that. We we know how to make 
stuff work good in VR and we would like to make that. So that's why we don't like the ports because yeah. ports are, are very often made like on buttons on UIs, just hold A and something crafts. We don't really like that. Uh, it's against our rules. So uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's it's in the Spectral Games uh, rule book, yeah, which you can yeah. find. It's written on the, on the all wall, all walls in the in the. In the office, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's it's uh, it's the it's the first book someone has to read when they uh, go uh, yeah. and get hired. Um, <laughs> but I've got two last questions for you guys. We got we got about five minutes left. My first question is a little bit. Um, it, it it's how can I say that? It's a it's a hard one to answer. So, you know. The game is open world, and in VR we don't see that a lot. There's just there's just a couple of games in open world. So because of that, the game is being compared to games such as Asgard's Rat 2, and you know it's considered to be a, a bigger open world than Medieval Dynasty. So what kind of element differ differentiates from Asgard's Rat, and you know why is it so different from each other? Yeah. Mm. Asgard's Wrath, the, the main difference, of course, would be a budget, but uh, <laughs> Asgard is uh, kind of packed in a separate locations, similar to our way. Uh, I, I have played Asgard for like four hours, I believe, uh, until I reached the, the desert area. Before that, it was uh, before I was bored, of course, <laughs> before I reached the, the, the desert area, it was uh, the area in the pyramids and where it was like locked uh, areas 10 by 10 meters so i didn't really feel any open wordness there uh, and uh, when i reached this, this, the desert area uh, i was kind of I, I don't know the word but i didn't feel like this is the game i would play because the desert is empty we didn't want to make a game that is empty so, uh, of course, the, the, the Asgard uh, runs on um, 72 FPS without Space Warp because it's a combat game, so we need to have a uh, full fluid of motions. We don't have that. Um, mm -hmm. So, yeah, we our world is so full because we can use the Space Warp and uh, play in 60, in 36 FPS, uh, reprojected to 72. This is not something that every player would agree to play, but we say it's worth it. We, would, we wanted to have our uh, world full and bright and full of life. Uh, we, our game is slow, is slow play, so it's something that we agreed on that we would, would like to have it this way. Uh, so, yeah, I guess that's something like that. Of course, the, the, the setting of realism really makes the game development hard because we can't make stuff like Asgard's Wrath does in some ways, like with magic teleports uh like superpowers etc <laughs> we are very limited to our realistic world in uh, medieval europe we just can't make a desert without foliage so we can run easily like we need to uh, to fill our world with foliage and this is fighting with the foliage in our game in terms of performance was for sure the biggest uh, troubles we had yeah exactly i can understand that and it's true like the world is so lively um plants are moving uh there's always animal around mostly running at you you know <laughs> they don't <laughs> like you a lot except foxes foxes are are kind but um yeah and th and those um those chicken they just their eyes they just look at you and it, it's it's creeping me out but anyway <laughs> it's really cool i like uh you know the um the design decision that you've decided there's just always something around hills that you can you know climb rivers that you can swim in and um and all of that so it's it's definitely a, a big a big world um so i've got one more question for you guys uh people in the chat if you have questions just put them in uh the discord the developers are always there to answer so you don't need to worry uh about that they'll, they'll get an answer for you but my last question and this will, uh, you know, impact my decision on keep playing the game. I might give a bad review depending on uh, what you guys say about that. But um, will we be able to craft uh, ties eventually in the game at some point? Uh... <laughs> As a decoration in your house, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> yes. 
<laughs> oh my god. We will think about it. Yes, definitely we will think about it. It will be the first tie in medieval times. Yes. Yeah, maybe it's, it'll be, you know, in the time where it was invented. So game of the year, <laughs> maybe we'll, we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> oh my gosh. Thank you so much, Paul and Greg, for coming in. Really appreciate to take your time. Um, you know, looking forward to see uh, the future of the game. So many potential new features we'll be seeing. So many, uh, you know, new things. And I can't wait to get back into it. Um, just to let you know, chat, uh, I'll be doing some live stream of the game at some point. I'll start uh, a new game and try to go through adventure mode completely. So keep a look out for that. Um, but until then, uh, you know, Paul and Greg, do you guys have anything to say before uh, we end the stream? Uh, I just want to thank you for having us here. Uh, it was a great time. I want to thank you for the uh, being with us as part of the community. Uh, it's really great to talk, to hear, and to feel the support. We are really, really grateful. We are doing it for you guys. So reading and hearing that you liked what we prepared and th that you are patient with our mistakes, because we are just humans and we are making mistakes, it's really, really helpful and a great feeling. So thank you. Thank you very much from my heart. Yeah, all I have all I could have ever dreamed of was to have players play uh, what uh, we have done. So, uh, yeah, I hope you guys uh, and any guys in the chat, you have fun playing our game and you will be with us throughout the, the whole long road ahead of us in terms of our development. Have fun. Thanks. All right. Thank you guys for coming in. Uh, keep a lookout. I do my interviews every Friday. Um, and uh, just uh, look at my Twitter, look at uh, where I announce my stuff uh, if you're looking forward to see uh, some more interviews. So thank you very much, everyone, and have yourself a wonderful uh, rest of Friday and have a good weekend. Bye. Have a great weekend. Bye. Bye.